Welcome back, guys. We're talking through Yahoo ADPs today. We got another segment of AD Please Me. That's right. Um, we're going to be telling you who represents the most and least value in every round based on current Yahoo average draft positions. With that, let's go. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos back at it again. Episode 24. We got some more uh, 80... Overrated, overrated television show, just for the record. What, this is? No, 24. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going with that? Oh man, what's the what's the main character's name? Jack Bauer. Jack Bauer. Very Played overrated. Uh, I forget his name. I can see his face. Yeah, I, I know. He's the same guy that's in like the one guy that's destined to live, the lone survivor, that show. Yeah, you can't say uh you can't say what's his name and then not know the answer. Keith Kiefer Sutherland. Kiefer Sutherland. Hi, Kiefer. Huge fan of the show. (laughs) What a terrible name, Kiefer. (laughs) I wonder how his parents came up with it. It must be like a familial name. Yeah, or they thought he would be a heifer and just changed the name. I don't know. Oh, boy. You know who is a heifer? These draft values. Mm, Hefty, (laughs) hefty, hefty. (laughs) We got another round of 80 Please Me today. Uh, We're going to be talking about uh, we're shifting from ESPN and we are moving to Yahoo. So we're going to be going through uh, Yahoo draft values round by round, telling you who we think the biggest draft value in each round is. Uh, Surprisingly different. I didn't think that we'd be able to to get two shows out of this. Shockingly. Um, They are incredibly not the same. Well, it's be- it's because both platforms have their own little ranks that people look at and scroll through when they're doing their drafts, you know? And yeah, so ab- absolutely crazy. Whichever platform you're drafting on absolutely absolutely influences the results. Now with that, let's get into AD. Please me. So nice we did it twice. Is that mm, what we're doing? Pleasing. Incredible. (laughs) Oh, man. All right. So currently going first overall in Yahoo drafts, obviously Christian McCaffrey, followed by Saquon, Zeke, Kamara, Derek Henry going fifth overall. That was surprising to me. Uh, Michael Thomas is currently going sixth, followed by Dalvin and then good old good old Patrick Mahomes currently being drafted overall. Currently being drafted at the the middle half of the <laughs> or the the second half of the first round, followed by Devonte, Joe Mixon, Tyree Kill, and Nick Chubb. Joe Alex, Mixon's even very very high in the first round there compared to what we have him ranked. Yes, uh, Joe Mixon yeah. currently going tenth in Yahoo leagues. We have him as our twentieth overall player this season. Side note, we just updated our rankings on the fantasy football Check um, them out to, to finally bump Clyde Edwards Hilaire up to the first round ranking um, that he clearly belongs to. Uh, side note, if you'd like to hear Jason make a fool of himself, please listen to our first episode we ever recorded where he thought that uh, Keyshawn Vaughn would have more value than Clyde Edwards Hilaire this year. <sighs> All right. Well, you got to get your <laughs> shots in when you can, I suppose, huh? <laughs> goodness oh man so I, again i don't know if there's that much value in the first round you just can't miss um i've personally bumped clyde Edwards hilaire's rankings way up uh to even i believe i have him at five overall um we've uh we've highlighted delvin cook as having value at, at pick seven potentially we have him um overall ranked at five um and again for me it i just don't know if I can trust him to stay healthy for a full 16 game season. That's why I'm higher on Alexander Madison this year, only because I think he's going to get hurt um, because he's always proven to get, to get hurt. So why, you know, why buck the trend if he misses two or three games? I think that decreases his value enough to not be one of those top five or six picks. Um, But the, like that's just me personally. I mean, 
I had him as a rookie. He was he's he was great until he tore his ACL. He's been fine ever since he came back. Um, but he's just I I don't know. I just don't for whatever reason, I don't like I feel like it's an intuition thing. Um, and I know it's usually a mother's intuition, but I'm gonna call it father's intuition that I just don't <laughs> have a good feeling about Dalvin Cook this year. Sack Daddy's intuition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that the voice drop guy? Who was that? I don't know where that came from. Um, as far as Dalvin goes, I mean, for me, it's just like he either has a new contract by the start of the season and I take him in the first round or he doesn't and I don't end up with having him on my team because he will invariably be drafted by somebody else. Um yep. I think, I mean, Adam Schefter even just tweeted today or said yep. today that uh, drafting Dalvin Cook in the first round without Dalvin having a new contract, quote, gives me pause. And so if something is uh, severe enough to give Adam Schefter pause, it gives me pause as well. And so unless Dalvin has a new contract, I am a complete stay away. I am not trying to be part of the Le'Veon Bell Pittsburgh Steelers fiasco that was just a couple right. years ago. Right. And uh, instead you will see good old Alexander Madison, I think crack the top 24 of my rankings. So. Yeah. I just like, I don't want to put up with it in a no, year where I you're going to, yeah. where you're going to have to put up with so much other crap. Like why, why deal with, the Dalvin cook potential fiasco. And, you know, he might end up turning out to be a Melvin Gordon type where he, you know, is going to play, is going to play. And then, you know, gets to be the week one. He's like, actually psych, I'm not playing. Give me money. And they could be like, Nope, kicks rocks. You're running back and we're not going to pay you. Um, I, I'm just afraid. And like if Adam Schefter, the most plugged in guy to the NFL is going to say that, then, like stay away. So my question for you would be where, where does he fall to until you take him? <laughs> oh, see, I mean, that was the same thing with Melvin Gordon. What last year, right? And I mean, uh, to an extent, but Melvin Gordon, I don't know if it was a first round pick. He's probably, probably a middle of the second. No, first but he would have round pick. I guess what I'm saying is the same thing happened with him where he would have been a surefire first round pick, but then he said, I'm holding out and then he maybe. fell. And I think that you'll see that. I think I would probably consider taking him. Jeez, fourth round. I mean, you're going to take him in the back half of the second round, right? No. Like, yes, you are. No He's way. sitting there. Well, yeah, no, you will. If like when, if you when miss we have out draft, on the whole season, then you just lit your second round pick on fire. Yeah, but so we we've moved our draft to the Saturday before the season starts. So. If there's any sniff at this point of him sitting out, we'll know by then. Yeah. And so you would like, you would still take him in the back half of the first round. Like you, you wouldn't let him slip by. The back yeah. half of the first? Yeah. If there's nothing that says that he's holding out on Saturday night. The, oh, the, if there's nothing that says that he's holding out. Yes. However, yeah. if I hear that he's holding out, I won't take him. I won't take him until... No. If, if I know he's going to hold out, I don't think I take him until like the fourth round. Yeah. And, and I will be honest with you. I am a guy, again, I go with my gut a lot on some of this stuff and it's nice to like dive into statistics this year more than I ever have so that I have that logical background. But when we initially did our rankings th three months ago already, that's crazy. But when we first did our rankings, I didn't even want to rank Dalvin Cook. And I almost still feel like I'm in a, same, a similar situation where I will do everything possible to not take him this year. Even though our rankings have him being a value in the first round currently, I just don't want to, I just don't, I won't do it. Well, the frustrating part is that the Vikings play at home. So it's not even like you get to know whether or not he traveled with the team. Sure. So you just get that 90 minutes, I think, ahead of game time or any leaks of reports over the weekend. You don't get that. That's why I was like, oh, hopefully they play away week one. Well, sadly, they do not. So rough. <sighs> yeah, but uh, don't don't take Patrick Mahomes at eight overall. Um, if you want to take Lamar. Yeah, if you want to take Lamar at eight overall, um, 
I, I think you could find reasons to do that. Um, unless, unless there's six points for a passing touchdown, don't take Lamar or sorry, don't take Mahomes at eight. Um, Devonte Adams, I would love to tr- see him try to have 200 targets this year. So at nine, I do think there's actually somewhat some value there. Um, but we've talked about previously, check out our, our mock draft episodes where it's just like, if you don't take running backs early, like you're going to be hosed later on because the wide receiver value is so much greater in the fourth, fifth round. Um, that would be the only reason I'd stay away from Devonte. Um, but then, yeah, Joe Mixon at 10, uh, Tyreek Hill at 11, Nick Chubb to round out round one. Um, we've talked extensively about Nick Chubb and how he probably won't be performing at around one value. Although he still has a super high upside. He's still really good at football. It's more just a Kareem Hunt factor more than it is a Nick Chubb being bad at football sort of thing. Um, Joe Mixon does have a really high upside if Joe Burrow's good in that offense. We don't know what it's going to look like, um, but I think taking him at 10, I think you can definitely wait till the second round to take him. Um, and Tyree Kill, I mean, he's dealing with a hamstring. So at this point, I, I, when I was going through my rankings, I dropped him from two to five, I think, um, just because that hamstring bothered him all last year and it's already bothering him this year. Um, and I'm just going to stay away from it. Um, moving on to round two, the values that we see. Again, surprise, surprise, Josh Jacobs uh, going significantly higher currently. He was going 21st overall in Yahoo. The world is catching on to Josh Jacobs. He is now up to 19th overall in Yahoo leagues. Uh, We still have him valued as our eighth overall player this season, so still significantly higher, still seeing a lot of value there. Outside of that, uh, we already touched on Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. He's currently going uh, pick 15 or pick 13 overall. He's, again, our ranked sixth player. So still seeing a lot of value out of Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, and Josh Jacobs in the second round. Surprise, surprise, the guy we think is that that is overvalued the most currently being drafted in the second round is Aaron Jones. He's currently going 21st overall. Um, We have him ranked all the way down at 29th overall. So, I mean... Just uh, that's a guy. That's a guy that I would stay away from. I I just I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing that potential out of this year. But we've we've gone into that extensively. If you want to hear our Aaron Jones take, please listen to the uh, the second running back rankings video where we talk about how all of his production last year came in just a few handful of football games. So that was like ten episodes ago. It's crazy. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. What about, what uh, about, go ahead. I, no, I was going to say, I, I have a random question for you. And this is, this maybe goes back a little bit to round one. Um, I had somebody text me that they didn't want to listen to our uh, pro bears podcast and they just wanted our rankings. Um, so I, of course, deferred him to the fantasy football psychos.com for all of our rankings. Must have been a Packers fan. No, actually, uh, he's a Colts fan that lives in Jacksonville. So oh, does he have a mullet I, to fit in with all the rest of everybody else in Jacksonville? No, he has no hair. He's bald. So, oh, well, sorry, Daniel. Must be a little um, out of place. <laughs> but he he asked the question of, would you take Derrick Henry or Clyde Edwards Hilaire? And we're actually split on this based on our rankings. Um, I have Clyde Edwards Hilaire at five, Derrick Henry at nine. You have Derrick Henry um, at nine and Clyde Edwards Hilaire at eight. So, te- I mean, I guess we're technically the same. Um, but I, I feel like that's really tight. Yeah, I uh, I would take what I think is the three down back or the pass catching back. If if it's a standard league, if you play an archaic standard league, take Derrick Henry. Then Derrick Henry. Get yeah. the 1,400 points. If you're in half or full PPR, take Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I don't think they're going to take him off the field. And I think he's probably going to have what? You think over over under 60 catches for Clyde Edwards Hilaire. It'll probably be a right about there, but there's also reports coming out of Titans camp that Derek Henry is showing more pass catching abilities this year. And that's what he worked on all off season. Consider can he me change intrigued. the direction though? Like, can he be the shifty guy and make people miss on a quick Does he need to? Screen? He like, just runs, he just runs a cornerback uh, yes, over. As long as he can get the turnaround and get the shoulder down in time, maybe it doesn't yeah. matter. I just worry yeah. about him like having a knee cut out under him, but. Yeah. Sorry. That that was a a tangent from round two, uh, AD pleasing us. Um, so Ken, Kenyon Drake, I I think you're higher on him than I am. Um, 
he's going pick 17. Uh, we have him at 11 overall. Um, I mean, he did say on Twitter, Hey, thank, you know, thank me in advance for winning you your titles this year. That's pretty confident. And I, I kind of like that swagger, but, uh, as far as Drake goes, like the guy's in a walking boot right now. Granted, he was at last summer as well, but like, Walking boots traditionally don't bode well for fantasy football players. Like Cam Newton, no. I believe, was in a walking boot last offseason, and we see how that turned out. So yeah. as long like a walking boot, what, 13 days, 23 days, whatever, before, <laughs> I don't know, 16 days, however long it is. Like we're talking just a couple weeks until Five. the season starts. And the guy is in a walking boot. Like, uh, that makes me a little nervous for good old Kenyon Drake. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I just want to draw attention to him. And then I, I do, th- um, you know, Travis Kelsey is going before George Kittle. I think we're both higher on Kittle than we are Kelsey. Um, so just, just would bring attention to that. Um, cause Kittle's literally the, like Brandon Ayuk, uh, went out of practice the other day for, for the 49. I mean, they don't, they literally don't have any receivers left. Uh, they're going to have to throw to Kittle. So uh, at this point, I, I think Kittle has to be higher on your boards than Travis Kelsey. Um, so j- just something to consider. And then, uh, Austin Eckler going at the end of round two. Um, I like that Eckler value. I love that Eckler value. Uh, I I think it's hard to take him earlier than that, but if you can be sitting there at the end of round two and be getting him, um, I I adore that because I mean he is the guy there. Yeah, I uh, I absolutely agree. I think that he actually represents a lot of value currently being drafted twenty third overall. Alex and I have him as our consensus sixteenth overall player. So back half of the second compared to where we have him in the first half of the second um round three we got some i think some excellent value uh hey, currently did, did you know that three is a magic number three is a magic number why is three yeah. a magic number um I, it's a schoolhouse rock song you don't know that song oh i'm sorry no by the way if you haven't listened to that in a while just go just go listen to it at three it's a magic number. Yeah, it is. It's a magic number. <laughs> That's what this podcast needs is more of Alex's singing. Sorry, I've, I've been lacking the last couple of weeks. I'll try to make up for it today. Oh, there we go. Well, uh, oh, man. Back to round three. Uh, ADPs that AD please me. Uh, Chris Carson is currently being drafted in the back half of the third round along with Ooh. Juju is actually like there's no ESPN round five value. No, no. You're drafting on Yahoo. If you want Juju on your team, you got to get him in the third. So we have both of them drafted much higher than the third round values where they're currently going. Um, We have Juju. He's going 35th overall. We have him ranked at 26th. Carson is going 33rd overall. We have him ranked 23rd overall. So... We're seeing a lot of value there now. Yeah, some something that's interesting to me just between ESPN and Yahoo is I feel like ESPN is higher on on running backs and Yahoo's higher on wide receivers. Just in just in general, well, um, most Yahoo leagues have three receivers. Okay, so maybe that's a, a significant reason why, like you know, Allen Robinson going at twenty eight. You compare that to ESPN where he was going significantly lower than that. That's also Um, just higher though, because he's going in front of guys that he was going behind. Like he was, he was going behind Amari. He was going behind AJ Brown, DJ Moore. Like he was in the fourth, fifth round solidly. Right. Yeah. And you just like, again, this is so like you look at ADPs and you want it to be very predictive of where people are going to go in your draft. And as soon as you're like planning on getting Allen Robinson in the fourth round, you're like, son of a bitch. As soon as he's going in the third, because you're, you're kind of banking on that, depending on what you do the first couple of rounds, you know, maybe. So yeah, I like Odell Beckham is going 26 in Yahoo um, overall. No, which, thanks. Don't, 
don't do that. I mean, he could finish there. Like, I, he definitely has that ceiling, um, but he hasn't proven in a while, and I, I think that's more of a dart throw. Um, going one pick behind Kenny Galladay, who has proven over the last couple of years to be a, a top. 10 wide out at, at worst with a returning Stafford. He's going ahead of Mike Evans. He's going ahead of Allen Robinson um, and Adam Thielen. I, I do not like that Odell Beckham value. And then I, I was surprised to see Melvin Gordon pop up in the middle of the third round. Um, changing that's, teams. That's high. Cha- changing teams. Um, he's already not been complaining, but saying that he's getting used to playing in the altitude, which is maybe a good thing by the time regular season comes around. But I, he's going ahead of some running backs that I would definitely prefer. prefer. Um, James Conner, obviously, I, I would much prefer to Melvin Gordon. Chris Carson, um, like Leonard Fournette, 100% prefer him over Melvin Gordon. So I'm, I'm, I'm very surprised that he's going in the middle of round three. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. Just Melvin Gordon, I think he's going to be in a split back system. Philip Lindsay is too good to not put him on the field at all there. So yeah. I don't know. I just, if he's a three yeah, down he's, back, he's only one, he's one of a, only a couple running backs that had, that's had back to back thousand yards the last two years. And he's only been in the league for two years. Like they're not just going to cut him out. I get that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know. They're just not uh, enough last, respect for Philip Lindsay. Yeah. Last last thing uh, from a round three perspective, Mark Andrews going at pick 34. Um, Is that tasty or not tasty? That's very much a reach in my opinion. I feel like that's somebody who's getting desperate um, in round three or they're, or, or they're saying... Or they live I'm in war- Baltimore. <laughs> they might live in Baltimore. <laughs> um, or they're like, I'm going to take him now and not and hope that or not hope that he's there in five picks for the, for the wrap um, because, you know, pick 11, 12 wouldn't have a tight end yet generally. Um, So they're going to pull the trigger on what they think is the third best tight end. Um, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but um, it's, it's definitely early to be taking Mark Andrews in, in my opinion. Um, Because I mean, we both prefer Zach Ertz to Mark Andrews. Who's uh, going in the next round. 100% 100% agree there. Now, moving into round four, uh, our most value that we're seeing right now is currently Leonard Fournette and Cooper Yeah, Cup. Lenny is currently going in round four. He has yeah. a path. He has a path to being a three down back. I am not sure why he is going in the middle of round four. I think that that is obscene value absolutely obscene value that he's going in the first half of the fourth round. And then you have Cooper cup who we have as a fringe wide receiver one going in the middle of round four, these Rams receivers, they are the Rodney danger field of fantasy football, man. They get no respect like year after year. Everybody says that they're going to vastly outperform their freaking uh, draft position. Cooper Cup is currently going 44th overall. We have him ranked as our 32nd overall player. Bobby Woods, Bobby Trees, <laughs> we have ranked as our 34th overall player. He's going at 65th in round six, the middle of round Not six. Not nice. No, these Rams receivers, man, the disrespect is real. Um. I, I love both of those round four picks. That's if I'm in if I'm in round four, I am hoping that they are there. And then after that, I don't know, probably like DJ Moore or something like that. But uh some overvalue we're seeing. Jonathan Taylor currently going as the first pick around four. Wow. It's just like Mac is there. The those are Jonathan Taylor truthers. Like you gotta love some tool time Jonathan Taylor Thomas. And just be all about it. Those people have been jumping around too much. They they've got to be Wisconsin fans, and they just concussed themselves. Like they forgot how to like control their neck. Like my my four week old daughter, and they're just like, <laughs> like they're just like hurting themselves by jumping around too much. That's that's ridiculous. Like he's I understand he's one of three people or whatever to get uh what is it back to back two thousand yard season back to back two or two time Doak Walker award winners like 
I get that he's phenomenal, but Marlon Mack is there. I don't think he's going to play third downs with Naheem Hines. Like, you have to be a Jonathan Taylor truther. Um, I was just, it's so hard for me to it's justify not, it's that. It's not pick. tool time this year to be taking him in the fourth round. <laughs> um, I just, I would not do it. Um, home you got improvement quarter reference? Going. Yeah, what? Yeah. To, to home, home improvement reference? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. All right. Should I? Can I do the rest of the podcast just hiding my mouth in front of my microphone? Wilson. Um. So I. The whoa, like Jonathan whoa, Taylor. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Taylor at the at the start of the fourth round doesn't make any sense. Um. In in no world would you be taking DJ Moore behind him. Leonard Fournette after him doesn't make any sense. Um, Leonard Fournette is more likely to be a three down back than Jonathan Taylor is. I mean, Le'Veon Bell is going at the end of round four. And I mean, we don't really like him from like, we have him literally ranked where he's going at 46, but like, I would rather have Le'Veon Bell well in front of Jonathan Taylor, even though Matt Gase is there holding him back. Like I, Adam Gase. I just, uh, did I say Antonio Gates? No, you said <laughs> Matt Gase. Oh, must boy. be his brother. He drives the offense. It's fine. Where am I? <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I don't know. That was a that was a fart. That was awesome. Um, so yeah, they're like Calvin Ridley um, go, going in the back half of the fourth round. We're we're not that big a fan of. Um, I, I think he could perform at this value. Um, and then Russell Wilson going in the middle of round four, one pick in front of Dak. Um, the disrespect. Where, where, where we see Russell Wilson not throwing the ball until they're behind by 10 points because they turn around and give the ball to Chris Carson over and over and over again until he fumbles and then he sits on the bench and then he comes back in and they give the ball to him every play. And then like Dak Prescott with Mike McCarthy there and three legitimate wide receivers and they're going to be throwing the ball a ton. Of their, like they're going to score a ton of points. I, I, I love the NFC East just as much. Well, almost as much as the NFC South from a, how many points are going to be scored in that division this year. Um, and so the fact like Russell Wilson going in front of Dak Prescott, I think is just malpractice. Yeah. The only other thing I will point out here is Zach Ertz is currently going in the back half of the fourth round. If you want a tight end and you like, if I miss, he's a guarantee, on, right? If I miss on Kittle, and Kelsey, I'm not reaching for Mark Andrews. I am all aboard Zach Ertz. I think he could absolutely end up as the tight end one. Like Alshon is going to miss time, significant amount of time to start the season. Maybe. We don't actually know that. He's on the pup. He could be activated. He could be, but Peterson said he doesn't expect to have him at the beginning of the season. So all signs are pointing to pup. And so... I mean, that's just the thing with them. Like Ertz is already the first or second read on half their passes play pass plays. Anyway, if you take what another one of their top weapons away elsewhere, it just means more passes for them. Um, I, I just think Ertz could be a really big value there in the fourth. So, yeah, I agree. I he's he is the default like the best third option from a tight end. Uh, and I think by a pretty wide margin, um, I, I actually think he's on a tier by himself after Kelsey and Kittle. And I think there's a line after Ertz. Um, and, uh, and then I think four through like maybe six or seven might, might be on their own tier again. I, and I've mentioned this before, but I look as at tight end ones as being a top six value. Like the, like the, oh, there's um, over 150, Fantasy points at the tight end position last year were o were over 150. So there's only six that were over 150, which is like 10 points a game, just below 10 points a game. Everybody else was under 125. So like there is a pretty steep fall off there where if you're under like if you're even at 100, like that's like five points a week, six, six points a week. Like you can't. You can't survive that. So gotta be making it up elsewhere. Yeah. So it like tight end is definitely a premium position. And I think it's good to have one of the top three. And I think Ertz is the Ertz is the cliff. And if you can get Ertz in the fourth, I, th I think you're doing really well. Yeah. Moving on. Round five values that 
A D. Please me. You know, you know, I had to make room for that drop to be put in twice. Oh, so that's, good. That's that's what she said. Yeah, it is. Uh, round five draft values that eighty please us. Uh, three running backs: Raheem Mostert, David Montgomery, and David Johnson. So we got the David brothers going in round five, and Raheem Mostert. Those are huge values. Like Mostert, I would probably. I don't know. I, we have him ranked ahead of the other two just because of how explosive that offense is and how explosive he was at the end of last season. But if you were to ask me which of those three was more likely to garner a three down running back role, I would pick the Davids over. I would pick Raheem um, mm-hmm. just because of Kyle Shan- Shanahan and his Shanahanigans. Um <laughs> Shanna shenanigans. I don't, I don't know how you say that because I think I tried it once and I nearly died. <laughs> but uh, Montgomery, I mean, we've yes, this is a Bears podcast. I've talked about him at length. I've called him a breakout. I think I've called him a sleeper. I've called him everything the under Bears. the sun. But I really do think he is going to have a much better second season. He's talked about how he's slimmed down and uh, you know made health and his weight his priority this off season. David Johnson, I mean, we've seen what he can do if healthy. Yes, he had that one awful like run around the left end where it looked like he had a piano on his back last season. But the guy he, was hurt. He, he was borrowing Alshon Jeffrey's piano for a yes, play. Yes, he was because <laughs> Alshon was already on IR. <laughs> but like if David Johnson is healthy and like is a three down back, that's huge value in the fifth. So I'd, I'm completely comfortable taking that swing. Um, and then let's see an, our, our, I mean, our really big overprice in this round is our overprice of every round. It's the quarterback going because we think if you don't get Lamar and Mahomes, you might as well wait till the, like the double digit rounds before you claim someone. And Deshaun is currently going in the front half of round five. And I'm just not willing to pay that price for a quarterback when I know I can get comparable value in later rounds. And I also don't think he's going to be as good without DeAndre Hopkins, the best receiver in the league. So I'm just not as thrilled with that value. Um, Some other guys in that round that that I like Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf uh, and DJ Chark. I mean, I think that that's all some really good value there. Devontae Parker, he could light it up again this season. So. And then you have Cortland Sutton, who I know you're extremely high on going in the front half of that round too, who we have ranked higher than where he's going. Yeah, I I feel like there's more value in the fourth and or like the fifth and sixth rounds than than in most, just because I devalue quarterbacks so much, or we we kind of both devalue quarterbacks so much. And whenever a quarterback bumps up into round four and five, it's just like nope, bad value, and it kind of causes some of these other guys to fall or to you know at least a little bit. I, I just don't. So just to weigh in real quick on David Montgomery, not to be a pro bears podcast here, but every indication from bears training camp is that Mitch Trubisky is not any better. And Nick Foles isn't better than Mitch Trubisky. So that's, that's an issue and their offensive line isn't any better and so I think I think that substantially limits David Montgomery's upside. Um, so would you go be, David Johnson there then? Yeah, I I have. So of the three, I have Mostert at 19 overall from a running back perspective. David Johnson at 20 and Montgomery 21. And I would I would stick by that. I know they're really close together, obviously. Um, but I mean, just think like I have Le'Veon at 22. I might even take Le'Veon over him. Only because like Tariq Cohen's still there and I just don't trust that offense because they're so if they don't have a quarterback again for I don't know, I've been on this planet for 32 years now. They've never had a good quarterback except for Jake Cutler uh, smoking Jay cut. Catch me outside on, on that one. Bring bring on the haters for that. I love Jay, but yeah, same like they if they don't have a quarterback it's hard to trust the running back but i guess in round 5 like if you can get a guy that's you know if they're going to actually turn around and give him the ball because their quarterback sucks then yeah he might have value um moving on round 6 
some guys, there are, I think, two standouts currently going around six. And then we also start in, getting into this stuff that I don't really feel comfortable talking about with. And that is defenses <laughs> currently being drafted in the sixth round of fantasy football drafts. Like, I don't like it. I don't respect it. I don't want to like it. I don't think I ever will. Uh, and we see that. You see the first defense go off the board in the sixth round. You got Justin Tucker currently being drafted in the seventh. I don't want to like this. You're not people. If those players are in your league, you just shake their hands and you thank them and say, thank you, kind sir, because now I get to draft a football player and you have sewered your fantasy football team for me. Thank you. Like, it's just not, that's not how you win fantasy football, but. I digress. Um, it could be. You, you've you never tried it. So I mean, maybe you should try it. That's and I've see, won see without if it, works. it. I'm good. I am so good. Okay. I was going to say, like, maybe it'd be a fun experiment for you to try in our league. Yeah. I'll draft three defenses in the round six through nine, six through eight, six, seven, and eight. They'll all be defenses this year, just so I got the right ones. Side note, your uh, courtesy wrestling reference for this episode, the 3D is the Dudley Boys finishing move. So you're welcome. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, the biggest values that we see in the sixth round are Robert Woods currently going 65th overall. He's our 34th ranked overall player going 65th. And T.Y. Yeah. Hilton, our 48th overall ranked player, currently going 69th. Nice. So just, I mean, if T.Y., like, Phil Rivers has supported several wide receiver ones in his day. He is going in the in the back half of the sixth round. A lot of that's though because he can't. He hasn't stayed healthy the last couple of years. But but if he does, yeah, no, I agree. Like if he does, that is just absolutely obscene value. Like what what round would you would you spend a fifth on Ty? Sure. Would you spend a fourth or a third? Uh, it depends on what the composition of my team is and, and what positional values are. But yeah, I could see T.Y. going in the fourth. But I'm um, not the third for me. But yeah, I could I could see a world where I spend a fourth round pick on T.Y. Certainly the fifth all the way down at, at the end of the sixth is just atrocious. And then uh, or it's great, depending on if you're taking him there. Exactly. Well, there you go. Um, yeah, I, that's just a tr- amazing value if you actually land him there because he's absolutely going to outperform it. Now, guys, guys, values that we see here that we're not huge fans of. Um, Josh Allen is being drafted in the sixth round right now. I don't understand that one. I don't. Drew Brees is also going there. Like, I'm just not. I'm not fans of that at all. Really, you got a couple tight ends. Uh, Higby, Henry, and Cook are currently all going in the sixth round. Um, yeah, so surprising that Higby, Hunter Henry, and Jared Cook are going before Gronk. Um, actually, just because I feel like Gronk is the bigger right name. before Gronk because he's, he's the first pick of the seventh. Yeah, but I'm I'm still surprised that they're going before Gronk. Um, just because of the name. Just just because of the name and. I mean, I'm I've actually considerably increased Gronk in my rankings um, just because I love the guy and want to root for him. I hope he's great. Um, but I'm, I'm sub- <laughs> like Hun- Hunter Henry. Like we we've talked about how like Tyrod isn't going to be throwing that much. They're probably going to be like they could run a similar offense to Baltimore at least a little bit. But he's never proven to support any wide receiver substantially. Charles Clay and Buffalo a little bit, but not to be taking him in the sixth round, um, especially before Evan Ingram, who's going to round eight. Um, that it just doesn't make any sense why, like, I, I think people are just filling out their rosters, but it's, it's egregiously bad. So yeah, Bob, Bobby trees, T Y Hilton, um, in the round six are our values. Um, and we would suggest people to hold off on drew Brees, Josh Allen. Like if you're going to wait on a quarterback, why not wait till like round 12 or 13 and, you know, instead of pulling the trigger at round six, because he's probably still going to be there. Um, and yeah, like for me, though, 
the the Tyler Higby love, like he he actually might be the biggest boomer bus player in the the entire fantasy draft. And do you want to like, take that player in the sixth round? I don't know, but if he does what he did the last five weeks of last year and their offense has not substantially changed, substantially changed because if anything, it's gotten more pass heavy with the exodus of Todd Gurley. Right. So if he's going to have like, he's one of like, I think four player, four tight ends in NFL history that have had over a hundred yards in, in five straight games. Like if he does that from the tight end spot, like he could win you leagues. He will win you leagues. He will. He will win you leagues. But taking him the sixth round is really banking on that. So if you can wait a, a little bit longer to get him, but I, I feel like if he's really good, he might be the player that's on the most fantasy winning teams this year. Yeah, because like Gerald t- Everett was was not playing. No, like, I get that. I'm just saying <sighs> that he he's like the boomer bus guy for me. If he if he's able to have a thousand yards and eight touchdowns, then that's incredible value there. If Gerald Everett comes back and is playing fifty percent of snaps and Higby has six hundred yards and four touchdowns, then obviously that value is not there. So you would take Higby over Evan Ingram. I think the upside's there. Okay, I I think it's I think it's really close. Um, and Evan Ingram's never stayed healthy, but I just it's it's close. But yeah, I would I would probably take him over Evan Ingram. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have it on tape, so we'll know if you're wrong. Yep. Um, let's see here. Move on. Uh, moving on to round seven. Uh, some crazy wide receiver value in round seven still i mean there we just keep talking about this wide receiver value michael gallup in in the mid to late rounds yeah michael gallup aj green and tyler boyd are all going here in the middle of the seventh or later and we have them as a round and a half or more higher ranked than where they're currently going aj green we have more than two rounds higher than where he's currently being drafted like you are absolutely getting a discount. You are getting the injury discount on AJ Green in the same way that you're getting yeah. the injury discount on TY Hilton. Like if they if if they remain healthy, either one of them, they absolutely outperform where they're being drafted. It's just do you want to be that person that takes a shot on them a little bit earlier to make sure you get them or is it like I don't know. I I just I could not imagine sitting there going round after round after round after round and passing on AJ Green and TY until they end up in the seventh. Like they won't get that far for me, but Yeah, I I I love that Tyler Boyd's literally going one pick after him in Yahoo because I also feel like they're that close together. Uh, we have them We only have them uh, ten spots apart, which is the same round. That's that. That's your fault, though. I I have them very close together, um, but yeah, I mean Michael Gallup from a from an output perspective, round seven, and he's you know a pretty solid wide receiver too in in our books. Um, I mean, he put up the same stat line as Amari Cooper did, and you can get him four rounds later. Like that's just crazy value in round seven still. Yeah. And uh, who are our, oh, look at, we have kickers. We have Justin Tucker going in the seventh. We have Harrison Butker going in the seventh. We have the Baltimore Baltimore and Pittsburgh defenses going in the seventh. And uh, what else? Matt Ryan is going in the seventh. Tom Brady is going in the seventh. Just guys that really don't do it for me in the seventh round. Like, not going to be me. It's pretty incredible. Also, Yahoo must not update their rankings all that often. The fact that Damian Williams is still going 86th overall when he's opted out of their season. Are yeah, they, I have no idea how he hasn't fallen off the face of the earth in their mock drafts and how he's still going in the eighth round. Moving on to the eighth round. Damian Williams is currently being drafted in the eighth round. Should not be going in the eighth round. 
He's not playing this year, in case you didn't know. Neither is Darius Geis, because no team is going to draft him, or I'm sorry, sign him, and he is currently being drafted in the eighth round. Like, also should not be going there. Um, Guys that are going in the eighth round that we do like. Can can I tell a quick story real quick? Yeah. Uh, This is like 10 years ago. My cousin was, we were drafting, it was like round 12, and all of a sudden he like, took a pen and he like threw it on the table and he's like uh-huh. guys guys pick of the draft pick of the draft pick of the draft damn i'm gonna take plaxico burris and he did not realize that he had shot himself in the leg <laughs> and was not playing <laughs> Like, I feel like that is the equivalent of drafting Damian Williams or Darius guys this year. Oh, my God. That reminds You're welcome me one for that, year. Matty. Shout out to you. Nice pick. Still love it. One year I drafted some running back that I think had, like, sprained his ankle that day, and I didn't know it yet, and nobody told me when I went up to draft yeah. him, and he was out for, like, the first three weeks of the season. Yeah, that's what I did with Ryan Terrain back in, like, 2009. Or no, it was 2008 because I er, I was a junior. So look at this. Yeah, 2009. 2009. I took Ryan Terrain as like my fifth or sixth running back in round five or six because that's all I took back then. And uh, hey, he had the best half of football anybody's ever seen from a running back after being on the pup for six weeks. And he came back and then he tore his ACL. Um, So just uh, word word of the wise, uh, just... Like get an up to date listing. Make sure of who's you're drafting it. players that are healthy. Yeah, that's. Hey, that is the cutting edge advice that you come to us to listen for. I mean, <laughs> uh, players that we like going in the eighth. Ronald Jones, incredible value. Jarvis Landry, great value there. I mean, him and Odell had basically the same stat line. I think if anything, Landry's might have been more impressive. And uh, you can get Landry five rounds later. Debo Samuel was what wide receiver nine in like the second half of the season last year. Um, Huge value in the eighth round. I get it. He's starting on the pop, but he could be a wide receiver. He's going to be the wide receiver one on that team. He could be a wide receiver one in fantasy football when he comes back after six to eight weeks. Like, and I think you, that is absolutely getting the injury discount on Debo. So it's crazy, like, because, you know, everybody's doing the injury discount. It's just, I love that, that Debo Samuel uh, value right there. And then at the end of the round, you have Jordan Howard going 95th overall. Um, the guy's a starting running back, and you can get a starting running back in the eighth round. Just nuts. Yeah, one thing that I would suggest doing, too, is I would not be afraid of injuries because, I like... When they come back, like you'll look at your roster in like week seven or eight and be like, hot damn, like I'm doing good here. Um, yeah, I saw that to uh, Debo's teammate though last year that, you know, tried to come back and then missed the whole season because of the same no, injury I, that Debo has. I know that, but like if you're going to do it with like one or two or three guys, like two of the three are going to come back and be fine. Um so I, I don't generally let injuries scare me. And especially if you're going to be able to get a d- deep discount, um, you can be sitting there later on, especially think, if you have an IR slot to drop them in and just kind of stash them. It, it doesn't hurt you at all, especially in round eight. Like you're probably going to have your running backs. You're going to have your wide receivers. You're probably going to have your tight end filled out. You'll probably have a quarterback. Maybe depends on how, you're, how it's going. So why not just take a high upside guy? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's like, especially in a COVID season, you don't even know if you're going to have a full season to watch football. Like, I'm we swinging will. for the... There's too, I'm, too much money involved. I, I agree. I personally agree, but you never know. Um, but I'm like, I'm swinging for the fences this year, man. Like, I would absolutely love to get that kind of value in that round. And after you have your starting lineup established, we're talking getting near the double digit rounds now. Like, pick 100 plus. Like... Why would I take, why would I take, you know, Matt Breida over a guy with a ceiling like Will Fuller has in that same round? Or, or why would I take Jarvis Landry, 
who has a much lower ceiling than Debo Samuel does. Like, right. I'm going to take the guys that absolutely have the highest ceiling because theoretically I already have my starters in place. I'm not going to use these players for anything more than like injury or depth. buy situations. Yeah. Then depth. And so give me that depth that can win me a season, you know, give me, give me like lat Murray and, you know, around these guys, give me Dion, jo- Deontay Johnson, like that, that absolute ceiling, the Brandon cooks of the world going in round 10, Darius Slayton going in round 10. Um, compared to like Austin Hooper going in round 10. I'm sorry, but the Browns tight end has not going to do much. And I'm not really excited about Austin Hooper going in round 10. I think I might've skipped around, but let's go. Yeah, I was going to, I was going to say just kind of as we're, we're starting to wrap this up a little bit, but I mean, your, your guy, Antonio Gibson's going in round 11. Um, and you know, there's reports coming out of that camp that he's running with the ones um him and Bryce Love have both gotten time with the ones and my my strategy is going to be get one of them yeah. because they're a lottery ticket so yep. I'm just going to try and get one of them if I get Antonio Gibson great just because that's who the regime drafted fine if I get Bryce Love who you know had like starting running back talent but then had a horrible knee injury and had to miss a year because of it Fine, then I'll take Bryce Love. I think either one of them have a chance to have like lottery ticket, we league winning appeal over the course of the season. It just depends on who Riverboat Ron wants to put in the best position to do that. Now, yeah, I, f- I feel like Bryce Love is very similar to, to very similar to Marcus Lattimore. <laughs> um, yeah, who, same kind of situation, right? Right. Who and I mean, this was a while ago, but. You know, he he destroyed his leg in, in college and then just was never the same. But if like Bryce Love was one of those guys where he would have been. I mean, he's really good as long as as long as he bounces back, like he'll be fine. So I I am intrigued to actually see what happens in that backfield a little bit, especially after you brought um, Antonio Gibson's name up. But I, I don't they have four guys there like. Yeah. I'm just going to try and get one of them. That's not Adrian Peterson. That right. I mean, he, that's, that's the dark cloud hanging over there. Him, Bryce love, Antonio Gibson, Peyton Barber, like hopefully they cut somebody. Um, <laughs> like, honestly, I like they need to cut one of those four running backs so that you can have a clearer picture of what's going on there. My, like they just signed Peyton Barber. My assumption is, is that they would cut Adrian Peterson, but I don't. At the same like, time, I, I wouldn't know. be surprised if AP had like 195 rushing attempts no. for like, you know, 400 yards. <laughs> yeah, I, right. I mean, they they could have they could have four running backs with like 75 to 100 carries and like you would have Just no be idea. Maddening. Yeah, I don't would, think Riverboat right. Ron's going to do that, but we'll see. Um, and then some later round value guys that we like Alexander Madison is a huge value in the 11th, uh, considering the fact that, uh, Delvin cook might not play at all. Lat Murray, I feel like I'm going to end up with him on a lot of teams this year. Just I feel like I you will too. Yeah. Cause I don't think you're going to draft him in the 11th. I think you're going to get him in like the eighth and do a victory lap. It's possible. It depends um, how much I've drank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Lap Murray and Henry Ruggs the third we think are huge values currently going in the 12th round uh, Lap Murray is a lottery ticket running back top five running back if Alvin Kamara gets injured Henry Ruggs is going to be on the field basically every play we believe for the Raiders so huge value there uh, even though he is a rookie we think the workload will still be there anything Ruggs. else Ruggs Rugs. I mean, he's. Uh, I mean, if you if you like nice carpet, I don't know how you don't take Henry Ruggs there. <clears throat> and with that, let's move on to newsy stuff. That's right, everybody's favorite segment, newsy stuff. Mm. Alex. We have breaking <laughs> news. I'm so scared every time we do this. Honestly, we have breaking breaking news 
from Bud Light. Bud oh, Light. I'm intrigued. Bud Light announced today that anyone who picks Gardner Minshew in the first round of their fantasy football draft will have a chance to enter to win a case of beer and any team to win its league championship with Minshew as the starting quarterback will have a chance to win a season's worth of Bud Light. Alex, you are the resident Gardner Minshew maniac. Are you going to be taking Gardner Minshew in the first round of our draft? So just for clarification, you have to draft him in the first round and win the title in the same year and start him in week 16 when you win the title. Um, okay. First of all, I, I like that a lot. Um, second of all, if, uh, I don't take him and I win the league, I will make enough money to buy Bud Light for a season. So I don't <laughs> need to do that. <laughs> Not that you're putting your any like, money on fantasy football. Like, I mean, if I win, if I win the league, then I could just take that money and buy enough Bud Light for the entire, like, it doesn't no, matter not anyway. Worth, not worth it. Nope. Sorry. Oh, I man. love you. I love me some magic, but come on. That doesn't make any sense. Maybe if it was Bud Light Platinum, you would uh, be game for it. But no, not just no, regular Bud Light. Just no. <laughs> regular is better than the Platinum anyway. And then lastly, our last bit of newsy stuff. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, among the couples who have managed to meet and marry on the bachelor and bachelorette, <laughs> all of the ones who <laughs> I can't get through this, all the ones that have uh, met and married so far have, uh, stayed together until now. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, Crystal Nielsen and Chris Randone, who met on bachelor in paradise, season five and married with a ceremony that aired on the same show in season six. They have now officially decided to divorce Alex. How sad are you? (laughs) Why are you laughing? These people are getting a divorce. I'm very sad. (laughs) 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 Devastated. (laughs) Uh, Heartbreaking Uh, stuff. (laughs) I can't. (laughs) <laughs> it's sad you find laughing and joy and happiness in another couple's demise Alex <laughs> ah, devastated as we all should be it's a trying time in their lives Crystal my face hurts Crystal may you find the strength to get through that nobody gets that reference but I'm assuming that's, that's how, how she talks talk. that's literally how the woman talks like I don't know how Chris Randone stayed married to her because she was insufferable on the show let me tell you what anyways okay she's got that she's apparently she's got that wop <laughs> If you found any part of this show entertaining <laughs> uh, or disrespectful, disgusting, or, yeah, or devastating, <laughs> please like and subscribe. Um, we, we <laughs> this is too much fun. We are on all social media platforms. We are at the FF Sackos everywhere. Uh, you can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, visit our website. We're going to try and have a new article up this week. We'll see. We got a crazy, crazy week ahead of us. The two of us filming back to back days here, but, uh, neither here nor there. Uh, thank you guys for listening and, uh, we'll catch you next time. Oh man. Too sad to say goodbye. Bye.
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.